today on the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, it is good to remember what a beautiful and central mystery this is to Christianity. It is one of the foundational uh, premises of our faith. And so, if you've ever had to try to defend it or explain it to somebody, uh, you might know the difficulty. The conversation normally goes something like this. There is the questioner, and the questioner says, what's the deal with the Trinity? And then the believer says, well, the Trinity is the belief that there are three persons and one God or nature. And then the questioner says, tell me more. And then the believer says, well, there's God the Father, there's God the Son, there's God the Holy Spirit. And then the, the questioner says, so there's three gods. And the Christian's like, no, no, there's not three gods. No, only one God. How can there be only one God? You just said that there were three. There's the Son God, there's the Father God, there's the Spirit God. And then the Christian says, well, there's three and one, and one and three. And eventually the conversation kind of uh, goes from there, and the questioner says, that doesn't make any sense. And then the Christian says, with a puffed up chest, that line that we always say about the Trinity, it's a mystery. <laughs> it's a mystery. <laughs> and then we just stop there, right? We're like, ah, oh, it's real hard to understand, and it's a mystery. And so we just say, well, I'm just not going to try to. <laughs> and we just stop there with the statement, three persons in one God. And that is a beautiful dogmatic statement. But there is a need for us to lean, to press in, to allow the truth of what the Trinity is to permeate us. And I'm going to make a bold statement because I believe that there is a sense in which this is true. God's revelation of the Trinity is the greatest act of love that he has given us. And you might say to yourself, what about the cross, Father Edwin? And I would hold to it. That the cross is beautiful and we meditate upon that, but the, the revelation that God is Trinity is an invitation to know him in a deeper and more profound way. If you look back at our first reading today, Moses is commanded to go back up on the mountain. This is after the people of God have rebelled and worshiped the golden calf and have had this very weird uh, ritual and God forgives them in his mercy and his favor and he invites Moses back up and Moses says, God, I would like to see you face to face. And God says, I cannot do that. You can't handle it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you in the cleft of a rock and I'm going to pass by and I'm going to allow you to see my back. And Moses is blown away by just seeing part of the God's back. And that is seen as something so wonderful and so awesome that even the people were not allowed to approach the mountain while this was happening, only Moses. And today, God reveals himself to you in his very deepest essence. He opens himself up to you. Have you ever been in a relationship where you could just tell that someone was hiding something from you? Where they weren't sharing their complete self? How did that make you feel? Made you feel distant and unloved. But God opens up to you his very innermost being and reveals to you for the first time in this new covenant in Jesus Christ that he is three persons in one God. The difficulty of this moment is because uh, three and one, one and three, that would be a mathematical problem if we were just, if we treated person and nature as the same, but we do not. These are very specific terms that we use. Perhaps the easiest way to think of nature is to think of answering the question, what something is. And the best way to think about person is it answers the question, who 
you are. And so nature says, uh, from what do we draw our potential into action? And then personhood says, who is doing this? And for us, it's very difficult to hold in our mind because for man, there's one nature and then there's one person. And so it's, we equate those two, nature and person. But we can look at creation and see places where there is a nature and not a person. You think of dogs, cats, rocks. They have a nature, but they're not persons. And so we know that they're not connected. And God is three persons distinct God the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is not the Father. They're distinct, but each of them possesses fully the nature of God. You're like, that, that doesn't work, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense in the created world, but God is beyond creation. And we cannot judge our own experience, even though we are made in the image and likeness of God, to be what is possible. It would be like if there was a statue that was made out of stone, and you're like, oh, that statue looks like a man. And then you took seeing the statue, and you said, oh, well, that looks like a man, so that means that man must be rigid and unmovable. No. The statue reveals some of the likeness of the thing that it's trying to capture, but not all of it. And so with us, right? We can look at our own selves and we can see parts of God because we're made in the image and likeness of God, but God is beyond us, beyond our capacity to understand. But in that self-revelation is an invitation to be in the middle of that great exchange of love. This is what the Catechism of the Catholic Church says. In, the, in paragraph 221 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, you can read that it says, St. John affirms that God is love. God's very being is love. By sending his only son and the spirit of love in the fullness of time, God has revealed his innermost secret. God himself is an eternal exchange of love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he has destined us to share in that exchange. When we say, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that is a beautiful statement, but he sent his only begotten son is a revelation that there are three persons, the Father, the Son, and at Pentecost, the Spirit, and he is showing us that, and now that we know that we are meant to be in the Father's house, we are meant to be in the middle of that exchange of love. It is so fitting that God is triune because he tells us at his Last Supper, We know that God is love. 1 John 4, 9 tells us. But at his Last Supper, God says what is the highest form of love. He says in John 15, 13, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for their friends. And so you can see this in the persons. God the Father, loving the Son, the Son loving the Father, and that love between them so real that the Spirit is there. This is the truth of the Trinity. And this is, and God has destined us, not by our nature, but by the gift of his grace to be part of his family, to be in the part of the Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, loving the Father. We cannot just say, ah, it's a mystery. (laughs) I'll think about this later. This is the fundamental revelation of God that we will be pondering for all eternity. And I would submit that it is good that it is difficult to understand. Because that means that heaven for all eternity will be exciting. Because we will be plumbing the depths of this new and exciting love, falling in love and being loved for all eternity. Never getting bored with the other in that perpetual excitement of who God is. 
This is what we are destined for. And so today, I would encourage us uh, to not just push the idea of the Trinity off till heaven, but to allow the mystery to unfold within our lives. What can we do? The first thing I would suggest, who has a catechism of the Catholic Church? Great, if you don't have one, go buy one. Uh, In in your prayer time, it's dense stuff, but as we enter into the truth, there is a lot of beauty that can be found there. Uh, Yeah. Section one, part one, section two, article one is about the Trinity. Just start reading a little bit about it. Then in your prayer time, I would suggest getting to know the individual persons of the Trinity. Don't just speak to God as if he was just an amorphous nature of God. Speak to him in his personhood. In God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. When you are uh, wondering about God's divine plan and his providence, pray to the Father. When you're having a difficult moment and the crosses of your life seem very heavy, pray to the Son that you can unite that with Him. When you are feeling like you need more power to live out your faith to resist temptation, ask the Holy Spirit to be your advocate and guide, specifically in this triune place of God. There is a relationality there. And if we do this, the immense love that the Father shows us and foreshadows heaven to be will be ours even now. It starts today because God has revealed himself to us and has destined us for that same love. Amen.